I invite Misael to continue with the Spanish reading of the second chapter of Acts, verses 14 through 21. Una lectura de Hechos 2 al versículo 14 al 21. Entonces Pedro dio un paso adelante junto con los otros once apóstoles y gritó a la multitud, Escuchen con atención todos ustedes compatriotas judíos y residentes de Jerusalén, no se equivoquen, estas personas no están borrachas como algunos de ustedes suponen. Las nueve de la mañana es demasiado temprano para emborracharse, ¿no? Lo que ustedes ven es lo que el profeta Joel predijo hace mucho tiempo. En los últimos días, dice Dios, derramé mi espíritu sobre toda la gente. Sus hijos e hijas profetizarán, sus jóvenes tendrán visiones y sus ancianos tendrán sueños. En esos días derramé mi espíritu aún sobre mis siervos, hombres, mujeres por igual, y profetizarán. Y haré maravillas arriba en los cielos y señales, y señales abajo en la tierra. Sangre, fuego, nube de humo, el sol se oscurecerá y la luna se pondrá roja como la sangre antes de que llegue el grande y glorioso día del Señor. Pero todo el que invoque el nombre del Señor será salvo. Esta es la palabra del Señor. Gracias a Dios. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. People of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken to you through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they will prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So there were a handful of occasions when I remember a television being rolled in to my first grade classroom on one of those tall, clanky metal carts. The news was turned on and Sister Beatrice Ann told us to stop what we were doing and put our pencils down and pay attention to what was happening on TV. Now we were not given much of an explanation but we knew that whether we understood what was unfolding on the TV screens or not, we were witnesses to history. And this history was ours. So a quick Google search assured me that my memories from all those years ago were not wrong. Both of the events I recall took place just about a month apart in the spring of 1981. On April 12th, the Space Shuttle Columbia was launched from Kennedy Space Center. It became the first reusable spacecraft that was piloted that was able to reach space. And then on May 13th, Pope John Paul II was shot and wounded as he entered St. Peter's Square in Vatican City. Now sure, the six and seven-year-olds who were gathered in this Munhall classroom were not the ones who were destined to orbit the earth or to tend the Pope's wounded body. But in both cases, we were told that we could and that we should show up 
that we needed to pay attention to what was happening in the world around us, and that whether we knew it or not or recognized the depth of this reality, we are connected. We are connected to one another and also to a world and a universe and a God that was at work outside of the walls of our Munhall classroom. And then we were told that even if we couldn't board a space shuttle that would orbit the Earth or rush off to Vatican City, there was one thing we could do no matter who we were and where we were, and that was pray. Now, I know that unifying moments don't just happen when TVs are rolled in on clanky carts. I guess today we would be more likely to hear of breaking news through alerts on our cell phones that would cause our heads to look down as if we were praying. But unifying moments also happen when the tiniest player on a little league team makes contact with the ball for the first time. They happen when graduates toss their caps in the air. When we gather with people we know and don't know to sing happy birthday to someone we all love, even if our tune is a little off key. Unifying moments interrupt the ordinary business of the everyday and they focus our attention on the reality that we are a part of a much bigger world than the ones we have constructed for ourselves. Unifying moments draw our attention outward, that we might live in the bigness of the world and the smallness of our individual selves at the same time even for just a moment. Now, the story that we heard today in Spanish and in English is a story that Luke tells to all of us of one such moment, when the Holy Spirit descended in tongues of fire and a windstorm. People who may otherwise never really have seen each other came out from behind closed doors to see just what all the fuss was about. As Jews from all nations gathered in Jerusalem to celebrate the Harvest Festival of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit showed up too, drawing individuals and households into a common court where Peter preached of a God who was at work upon and through all of them men and women, young and old, enslaved and free, regardless of rank or class or native language or social location. The Holy Spirit was not only welcoming all, but giving each and every person a job to do. Peter speaks in his own native language, we are told, but all who were there understood the message and knew it was for them. His words had meaning, not because someone was there translating his speech, but because of the openness of their hearing. And together, the diverse group of believers learned that God's Spirit was not just for Peter and the other ten that Jesus called a few years back, but the Holy Spirit was here for all. And they learned this before nine o'clock in the morning which isn't too bad. Barbara Brown Taylor says this, the disciples had sucked in God's own breath and been transformed by it. The Holy Spirit had entered into them the same way it had entered into Mary, the mother of Jesus, and for the same reason. It was time for God to be born again not in one body this time, but in a body of believers who would receive the breath of life from their Lord and pass it on, using their own bodies to distribute the gift. Now, I've been thinking a lot lately about how we are a Pentecost people. 
Not just we in terms of the big church who gathers and buildings across the globe to worship a risen Christ, but about how we, those who gather to worship at ELPC, are a Pentecost people. We are a people who gather to worship on this side of the resurrection. And we, like those disciples, are searching for what comes next. We have experienced that shifting foundation that comes from loss, even a year later as we mourn a leader with whom we identified, but who has moved on in Christ's service. We know that we are heading for something new, even as we see the temperature rise as the CAT scans are completed. But we don't know just where we're going yet. Now, many of us are not entirely sure what to do in the meantime. Some of us are sticking together in upper rooms. We are praying and talking and surrounding ourselves with those who get where we're coming from, who in our presence, who help us to feel safe. Now, some of us also then go through the motions of what has been familiar to us, sitting in the same pews and on the same committees and keeping busy while we wait. Our ability to keep on keeping on, giving us a sense of security in a liminal or transitional space. And then some of us go back home, or some of us just sleep in. But the Holy Spirit shows up, no matter where we are or how we are navigating the season, the Holy Spirit is God's gift to us too, nudging us out of complacency greeting us in fear and tucking us in when we need to sleep in. God shows up again and again as God has been known to do. God disrupts our expectation and even upends the habits we formed to, that we have constructed to give ourselves a little bit of a false sense of control. God speaks to God's people on God's time and with a clarity of voice appoints preachers to point out the fulfillment of prophecy not just in days gone by but here and now reminding all of us that God has been with us all along. And so we gather as a people of God. We are diverse in gifts and awareness. We are different in experiences and stories. And God is inviting each one of us to throw open our doors, whether they are the literal doors to our homes or our church, or whether they are the meta metaphorical doors of our hearts and our minds that we've installed to create barriers to protect us from what we fear. God is calling us to step out through these doorways and into the world to see the work of an active, dynamic, and exciting God and to notice that God, who is faithful, is already here. God is at work in the world. God is anointing each one of us so that we can do the work of the church right here and right now. The church that gathers at ELPC was not just the church when Randy was our senior pastor. It wasn't just the church when Bob Chestnut was our senior pastor or Dr. Robshaw or any of those who had the title of senior pastor. And honestly, we do not have to wait until a new senior pastor is called to see what God is doing among us. The church that gathers at ELPC is not just the church that once 
housed the melons and the neglies. Or, and, it wasn't, and it's not the church that stayed in a community that was in economic decline. ELPC is the church of God right here, right now, in this context, in this day, among and through this group of people and these gifts assembled, in these needs around us, God is here. Siblings, Pentecost reminds us that it's time for God to be born again and again and again and again through us. We, too, are Christ's body called to receive the breath of God and to pass it on. We are the ones the Holy Spirit calls together in our beautiful diversity, creating a community that transcends human categories of race or gender or class or identity or social location. We are a community of church through whom there are differences in ideology and political persuasion and even skill. But we are the ones right here through whom the Holy Spirit brings unity within and through our diversity, not diminishing our differences, but magnifying them for a common ministry not taking away the things that make us unique or different, but fostering understanding. Siblings, we are a Pentecost people, not just today, 50 days after Easter, but every day. We are a Pentecost people through whom the Holy Spirit is at work, calling, equipping, gathering, and sending. We are a Pentecost people, those who worship a living and present God, who calls us to to give birth to the fullness of God's love in our words and our deeds and in the quality of the community we form. We are a Pentecost people, sometimes uncomfortable or challenged, maybe even confused, we are a Pentecost people, empowered and gifted and loved, not because it's who we have chosen to be, but it is who Christ has already claimed as God's own. And also hear this. If you are not quite ready to jump into the deep end of the pool of Pentecost, my encouragement to you is to simply listen. Listen to breeze blowing through tree branches. Listen to the sound of kids playing in the street. Listen to the state of the world on the nightly news. Listen to the ideas and opinions of your neighbors and listen to the stories of those that you have chosen not to live near. Listen to those with whom you easily identify and listen to those with whom you certainly disagree. And then notice the point where all of the differences are somehow held together and there you will find the spirit of the living God. Church of God, siblings in Christ, happy Pentecost, happy birthday to the church that unites us as one. Remember not only this day but always that we are a Pentecost people. We are those to whom the Holy Spirit has come and through whom the Holy Spirit is at work. May we breathe in the breath of life and then use our bodies, our voices, our collaborative efforts and our hopes 
to share that gift with others, not because we are perfect, but because God is. And through God, all things are possible. And so because God is gracious and faithful and with us always, may we give birth to the love of God in Christ. Siblings, may it be so. Amen.